All right, welcome back. So um, right after the rust installation, I ended on this page. Um, for a quick recap of how I got here, let's close this. After you install Rust, it tells you to uh, run the Rust up command to see the local documentation. So in your terminal, so I have on this side. Let me clear this just so it's. You can do Rust up doc, and that opens this thing. So in this video, I'd like to explore what this thing is. Read through it, well, seemingly for the first time. I mean, it's a little bigger. Okay. Uh, maybe a little smaller. There we go. Maybe even move it to the side a little bit. I don't need to take up the whole screen, right? Just most of it. That's fine. Rust documentation. Welcome to an overview of the documentation provided by the Rust project. All of these projects are managed by the docs team. There are other unofficial documentation resources as well. Many of these resources take the form of books. We collectively call these the Rust bookshelf. Some are large, some are small. Okay, noted. This is the official documentation. Learn Rust. If you'd like to learn Rust, this is the spot for you. All of these resources assume that you have programmed before, but not in any specific language. Okay, so some programming knowledge prior, but not really. The Rust programming language, affectionately nicknamed the book. The Rust programming language will give you an overview of the language from first principles. You'll build a few projects along the way, and by the end, you'll have a solid grasp of the language. There's also another option, Rust by example. If you're reading multiple, if reading multiple hundreds of pages about a language isn't your style, then Rust by example has you covered. While this book talks about code with a lot of words, well, while this book talks about code with a lot of words, I'm guessing there's like a uh, set of code and then a big description of what it's actually doing. The Rust by example, RBE, shows off a bunch of code and keeps the talking to a minimum. It also includes exercises. I might have to check that out. I haven't looked at that yet. And then you come down here. I have a used Rust. Use. Use. I need to work on my English. Use Rust section. Once you've gotten familiar with the language, these resources can help you when you're actually using it day to day. Maybe one day I'll be using it day to day. Who knows? The standard library. So they suggest not to look at this until I understand at least a little bit about the language. Has extensive documentation with explanations of how to use various things as well as examples of example code for accomplishing various tasks. Huh, and they have a search there, but let's click on this, see what it takes us. Standard library. And a document of how to read the standard library. Uh, to contribute changes, uh, tour, collection of containers, primitive types. Uh, there's quite a bit here, actually. Nothing out of never. That's a primitive type. Experimental, huh? Not gonna touch it. Uh, modules. Allocate any art art. What is an art? Uh, vendors. Okay, like architecture. ASCII. Cell, have no idea what that is. Default has hint. Hint to compiler that affects how code should be emitted or optimized. Okay. Marker, memory. Um, nothing here. And then you have experimental, so there's things still coming out. Like we're still being built. And we have macros, which I'm not exactly sure what they are per se, but they are different and they have their own separate documentation assertions probably for uh, testing configuration flags compile time format print and then we have experimental ones here too and then we have keywords as constant create enum extern function for if implementation let loop and struct all right let's go back here 
I'm gonna trust that this works. I'm not gonna mess around with it. The Rust C book describes the Rust compiler. Uh huh. And they actually have their own book for the compiler. And they have a print line. And I'm guessing this. We'll, we'll, we'll see what it says. Welcome to the Rust C book. Rust C is the compiler for Rust programming language provided by the project itself compiler. Compilers take your source code and produce binary code, either as a library or executable. Okay, compiler takes your source code, the stuff you wrote, produces binary code, ones and zeros, got it. Um, either as a library or executable. You can either use it as a library as in reference it or you could run it directly, executable. Most Rust programmers don't invoke Rust-C directly, but instead do it through Cargo. It's all in, it's all in service of Rust-C though. If you want to see how Cargo calls Rust-C, you can make Cargo verbose, and I guess it will tell you all of the things that happens. Uh, yeah, so you do this, make it verbose, and it will print out each Rust-C invocation this book can help you understand what each of these options does. Additionally, while most, I don't know how to say that. I have been, I don't even think I'm part of the community yet. I'm just learning it, but Rusticien, Rusticien, Rusticiens. I'm just gonna rest people. Use cargo. Not all do. Sometimes they integrate Rust C into their build systems. This book should provide a guide to all of the options you need to do so. Then it has the basic stuff. I'm not seeing any cargo, they just go via Rust C. But okay, good to know that's there. They have a cargo book. It's a guide to cargo. Rust build tool and dependency manager. Use it to build things and use it to manage dependencies. And this book is considerably larger. Cargo is Rust Package Manager. Cargo downloads your Rust packages, packages dependencies, compiles your package, makes distributable packages, and uploads them to crates.io, the Rust Community Package Registry. You can contribute to this book on GitHub. I haven't looked at crates. See what that looks like. Rust Community Crates Registry. Install, getting started. New crates, most downloaded. And so these are the packages I'll most likely be using. And I could upload to this seemingly easily if I just use the cargo, I learn cargo. Most recent downloads, popular keywords, Google, it's a Google package. Meh. All right, cool. Uh, to get started with cargo, install cargo on Rust and set up your first crate. And then you have a guide and reference and all of this stuff. Cool. Oh, one thing to note, but I'm not sure if it's true for every page we went to, but these are all local files. So you should be able to look at this if you have internet or not. So yeah, we have downloaded some books. They've given us books with our installation. The Rust doc book describes your documentation tool. I have a book for each tool. Hey, uh, I'm not sure if that's a mistake or supposed to be there. Oh, well. what is Rust Doc? The standard Rust distribution ships with a tool called Rust Doc. Its job is to generate documentation for Rust projects. On a fundamental level, Rust Doc takes as an argument either a crate root or a markdown file and produces HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, I am not sure if all of this stuff was produced via Rust docs. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Dog food, you know, uh, use your own tools. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I don't know enough about Rust yet. Using it with Cargo, Cargo doc. And quite possibly. Uh, okay, let's see what else is here. Extended error listing. Many of Rust errors come with error codes and you can request extended diagnostics from the compiler on those errors. You can also read them here if you prefer that way. 
so we got a list of errors that we can get. Huh. Wow, this is a large page. Look how look how the scrolling goes. And oh did it stop? No. These are seemingly all the potential compiler errors that you can get. I'm not gonna read through this, but I now know it's here as a reference. And they have a master rust section. Once you're quite familiar with the language, you may find these advanced resources useful. Um, okay, the reference. The reference is a not an not a formal spec, but it is more detailed and comprehensive than the book. That's kind of scary. Starts off with red. That's that's scary, scary. I don't even want to look at this right now. This is, this is an example warning. And this is this is relatively long. Closing that. Rest on Namicon. Don't know what that means. The this name book is your guidebook to the dark arts of unsafe rust. It also sometimes called the Namicon. Unsafe arts. They really call it the dark arts. And the dark arts are very extensive. This is a long list. Ooh, I'm gonna stay away from the dark arts. I'm not ready for that. And then they have the unstable book, which I guess is different from the dark arts. Has documentation for unstable features. This probably changes the leads. Where's, whoa, there's a lot of unstable features. Hmm. Hmm. Hopefully these are like short things. Yeah, these are. I thought each of these was like an entire section for 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 a second there. All right, going back to the beginning. I don't know how to use this book, but welcome to the unstable book. This book consists of a number of chapters, each one organized by a feature flag. That is, when using an unstable feature of Rust, you must use a flag like this. Understood. I can't see why I would need to use an unstable feature. I also can't see why I want to depend on an unstable feature, at least not right, not right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's see. That is the entirety of this section. Cool. Uh, we went through the local Rust doc up, Rust up doc documentation and learned a few things. Hope this was helpful. Peace.